When doing products and simplifying algebraic expressions, the distributive property is essential. You have to know this. So how the distributive property works is we multiply the thing that is right outside the bracket. I always tell my students, you look for the thing that is squashed up against the bracket, no sign separating that thing and the bracket. And we multiply that into the bracket, okay? The thing outside the bracket, the thing that's squashed up gets multiplied by all three, in this case it's three, all terms inside. So if there were two terms inside, you have to multiply the W by that term and the W by that term. But we have three terms. So we're saying W times X gives me WX. W times Y gives me WY. And W times Z gives me WZ. You need to remember your exponent laws when doing your distributive property. And another thing, you have to remember to multiply. So I often see students making the mistake of adding. Let's practice a few. Okay, in my first example, I've got 3x outside the brackets and I've got three terms inside the bracket. So remind yourself, when you do the distributive property, you are multiplying. So we're going to go 3x multiplied by x cubed. Remember, when you are multiplying and the bases are the same, okay, x and x, we add the exponents. So you keep the base, you add the exponents. One plus three is four. Then you do it again, but you do it with three X and negative four X squared. So that is going to give me negative 12 X to the power of three. Again, it will be three times negative four. That's where the negative 12 comes from. And then we add the exponents. One plus two, that's where the three comes from. Then we need to do it again, but with the 3x and the 8, okay? So 3 times 8 is 24, and then don't forget about the x. Then you always need to assess, can I add or subtract like terms? Are there any like terms here? No. Yes, they all have x's, but not only does the base need to be the same, so x, but it has to have the same exponent. So x to the power of four is not the same as x to the power of three, not the same as x. So that's our final answer for example one. Let's take a look at example two. Now, example two often tricks people because we've got five y minus y. So I know what you wanna do. I know what you wanna do. You want to subtract these two first. Well, I hope not, but that's what a lot of people think of doing. It's not. Remember, the rule is the thing that is squashed up against the bracket, in this case, negative y, that is what we are going to multiply into the bracket. So we do not, and I repeat, we do not subtract those two first. As, much, as tempting as it seems, we are going to distribute or multiply you basically take that negative y and multiply it into the bracket with all three terms. And then some people say, okay, ma'am, but what about the 5y? Just drop it down. Okay, so we're going to drop the 5y down. Then we're going to say negative y times 4y squared. Remember, negative times a positive is negative. 4, then y cubed. Remember, we are adding the exponents. There's an invisible one over here. 1 plus 2 is 3. Then we do the next one, negative y times negative y. A negative times a negative is a positive y squared. A big, big mistake that people often make is they mess up with the sign, so just be careful. Then negative y times three is negative three y. Now don't move on with your life, you're not done. We need to do like terms if there are any. So five y, and negative 3y, those are like terms. So I've got 5y minus 3y. So you have five of them, minus three of them. You're left with two of them. It doesn't matter if you put that at the beginning or at the end. Generally, we do descending powers. So negative 4y cubed plus y squared plus 2y. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the negative 4 y cubed hasn't got friends, so it stays negative 4 y cubed, the positive y squared, no friends, and then we add these two together, or in this case, subtract. Okay, we're going to get a little bit more interesting with the next few examples. This one is 2 over 3 x squared, and now immediately people, when they see fractions, they're like, what? Don't freak out. 
apply the distributive property, the distributive law, apply it like normal. We'll deal with the fractions as they come. Okay, so what do I mean? We're going to take the 2 over 3x squared. That is the thing that is squashed up against the bracket. It's right outside. It's going to be distributed or multiplied into the bracket again with all three terms. I don't know why I keep doing 3. It doesn't always have to be 3. It can be 2. It can be 5. It can be 6. Okay, so first things first. 2 over 3x squared times 1 over 3x squared. I often tell my students that if you're struggling and you don't know what to do and it's overwhelming, just do it on the side. So 2 over 3x squared multiplied by 1 over 3x squared. First things first is these are going to get multiplied together. And if you've forgotten, how do you do fractions? It's top times top. So 2 times 1, which is 2 and bottom times bottom, three times three, which is nine. Okay, so we've got two over nine, and then we've got x squared times x squared. Remember when we are multiplying and the bases are the same, we keep the base and we add the exponents. So two plus two, four. Okay, so we've done one of our arrows. We've done this first one over there. Our second arrow, we've got two over three, x squared being multiplied by negative 6x. Now, you can also use your calculator to help you. What we're doing again is we multiply the big numbers, the coefficients, 2 over 3 times negative 6. If you use your calculator, it tells me that 2 over 3 times negative 6 is negative 4. Okay? Another way you can do it is 2 over 3 times negative 6 over 1. Remember, whole numbers can be written over 1. You do top times top, so that's negative 12, and bottom times bottom, which is 3. So negative 12 divided by 3, negative 4. So you see, we can get there without a calculator. So that's the big numbers, the coefficients. Then x squared times x, remember, bases are the same. We are multiplying. We keep the base and add the exponents. 2 plus invisible 1 gives me 3. Then we need to do the last one, the last, so that was that one. Now we are doing the last one. So 2 over 3 x squared multiplied by 3. Remember, 3 over 1. So we go this fraction times this fraction. So you can use your calculator as well. But 2 over 3 times 3 over 1. So top times top, 6. Bottom times bottom, 3. 6 over 3 is 2, positive 2. Or you can just use your calculator and then don't forget about the x squared. In this case, we do not have like terms. Remember, in order for there to be like terms, not only must it be x, 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 but the exponents need to be the same. Please don't forget this. Okay, let's do these last two. They're a little bit more tricky. Let's see how we do. In this example, we need to, again, distribute, but this gets a little bit more confusing because of this term over here. I've seen students do some weird things. Just remember, the thing that you're distributing into the bracket is the term that is squashed up against the bracket. There's no sign separating the term and the bracket. So in other words, it's very clear that over here, we don't distribute this because there's a sign separating it. So what we do is we simply just carry this term down into the next line. But what I do distribute is this into the bracket. So it is negative 8y times positive 2y squared. So negative 8 times positive 2 is negative 16. And then y cubed. Because remember, you keep the base. You add the exponents because we're multiplying. That's what we're doing by distributing. Then negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24. Add the exponents on the y. So it's going to be y squared. And then we drop this term down. So negative 3y squared gets dropped down. Then in my last step, we just do like terms. So these are like terms. Negative 16y cubed is by itself. We've got 24y squared minus 3y squared. We've got 21y squared. I wanted to contrast it with this example where I have the negative 8y squashed up against the bracket and there's a 2y. Can you see that there's no sign separating the 2y and the bracket? Same thing with the negative 8y. So what I'm going to do in this case is what I'm first suggesting is multiplying these two together and then distributing that into the bracket. So what do I mean by that? 
Well, first say negative 8y times 2y. So it's going to be negative 16y squared. So I've just multiplied these two green ones together to get this one and then drop the bracket. Then we're going to multiply that into the bracket. So we're going to do that and then that. So negative 16y squared times 2y squared. That's negative 32y to the power of 4. Remember, keep the base, add the exponents. And then negative 16 times negative 3. Remember, negative times a negative is a positive. 16 times 3 is 48. And then y squared multiplied by y to the power of 1 is y cubed. Another way to do this would be as follows. If you first want to multiply these two together and then keep the 2y, so you would distribute that and that. So it would be negative 16 y cubed and then positive 24 y squared keep that in a bracket with 2y on the outside and then distribute that 2y into the bracket so you're first doing the distributive law over here and then you're getting an answer and then applying it again essentially that will leave you with the same final answer also perfect also correct and the last one that I'll show you is this one. We've got uh, something outside this first bracket and something outside the second bracket. You multiply the three just into the first bracket, all three terms, and you multiply the negative two just into the second bracket, all three terms. So when you distribute the three into the first bracket, this is what you get. Then you distribute the negative two into the second bracket and you get that. And then you do like terms. So. 12a squared minus 2a squared, that's 10a squared. Then we've got negative 24a plus a plus 2a, that is negative 21a, and then we've got minus 2. In other videos on this playlist, we'll look at binomial times binomial, binomial times trinomial, factorizing, and lots of other things. So check out the links in the description box below for more simplifying algebraic expressions.